Hey everybody, it's Lo and welcome back to my channel, Life Without Limits. In this video, I'm going to share with you the five compound movements that you must be doing during your workouts. So if you want to see that, then just keep watching. Whether you work out at home or at the gym, have minimal equipment or all of the equipment, or focusing on just lighter weight and higher reps, or want to do all of the weight with little bit of reps. These are the five compound movements, also known as the big five, that you must be doing and including in your workout programming. And they're also super important for functional daily activities. Almost everything you do from pushing this shopping cart and you know picking something up, picking even like your child up, really doing anything all ties back to these five movements. So doing them properly, having good strength in them just makes daily living easier even easier and even better. Plus, you're also working out and then you might lose some weight and you might build some muscle and you'll just look good too. Really, it's a win-win situation all around. There are many ways to do all of these movements and there are also different ways to program them as well. For me personally, I'm doing two full body days at the gym right now. So I'm doing each of these movements once, having one of these exercises during each of my workout days. But if you're able to go to the gym more than that and you're doing you know, two upper body days, two lower body days, then you can really split these up accordingly since, you know, squats are lower body and then push-ups are upper body. So really just spreading it out as you see fit for your workout programming. If you do want personalized workout programming, you're going to the gym, you don't really have a plan, you don't know what to do, but you want something that's tailored to you, hit your girl up. I do want to put my personal training certification to more use and I do love building workout programs. So I would love to work with you if that's something that you're interested in. But without further ado, let's get into those five compound movements movements that you must be doing. The first one is a squat. So a squat can look like your traditional barbell back squat. You can even do it with dumbbells or a resistance band holding one with it under your feet to add some resistance if you don't have access to a barbell. You can do front squats, you can do goblet squats, you can do narrow stance squats which really focus on your quads more. Same with goblet and front squats are a bit more quad focused than they are glute focused. You can also do sumo squats which have a bit of a wider stance and target a bit more more of your inner thighs and your glute med. So there are many different ways to do the squat, but overall the squat is a very important compound movement. Now what makes all of those squats the same is that they have three points of flexion, which means that there are three points in your body that you are bending and then of course extending to stand back up. And that is your hips, your knees, and your ankles. The squat is also a great exercise to get your entire posterior chain, which includes your back, your whole backside, your legs, your booty, but it also does target your quads, especially, again, if you are doing front squats or goblet squats, something where the weight is a bit more ahead of you than behind you. Now, because of those three points of flexion, it is a deceivingly complicated exercise and can be risky if your form isn't great and you start throwing weight on your back, which can lead to injury or just reinforcing a poor movement pattern. It is definitely one that needs to be practiced, even starting with just body weight, but the key points to squatting and getting to a safe squat are to make sure that your knees don't cave in when you're pushing the weight up, keeping your core braced, not hunching over in your upper back, and not caving in more on your lower back and putting too much pressure there. Ideally, you'd be squatting to below parallel, which means that your butt makes it lower than your knees because if your butt and knees are at the same level, that is parallel, they're parallel to each other. Your thigh bone is a horizontal versus when you're standing up, it's vertical. So the ideal situation to get the full range of motion, the most strength throughout the entire movement is to have your butt go below your knees, but that does require more mobility, especially in your hips and in your ankles. So if you are just starting out, just doing what you can, of course, going below parallel, it's best to get the strength throughout the full range of motion, but it's not a complete requirement, especially if you do have any limitations. I'd rather you practice what you can and strengthen what you can versus injure yourself trying to do something that you can't and then working on being able to bend your ankles more and move your hips more since they are where a lot of the movement is coming from and in turn where the strength is coming from. The next compound movement is a hip hinge movement. So this is mainly seen as the deadlift, often the conventional deadlift, which includes bent knees. There's also stiff leg deadlift with super straight legs, Romanian deadlift, which is 
pretty much like the stiff leg deadlift but with a slight bend in your knees just to allow for a bit of slack as well as the single leg deadlift and if deadlifting is just like you're like I'm not doing that we don't deadlift over here then doing other movements such as kettlebell swings or good mornings do target that same hip hinge motion as a hip hinge movement the movement is in the name you hinge at the hips that is where all of the movement is coming from again something like a conventional deadlift you will be bending in your knees as well but all of the movement is coming from the hips first actually I have an entire video that I did pretty long time ago on the hip hinge and just practicing the hip hinge in order to improve your deadlifts. So I will have that linked down below, but just quickly for the sake of this video, some tips for the hip hinge movement. It should be focused on the butt going backwards and keeping a straight torso with a braced core. When doing a deadlift in particular, having your shoulders braced and locked in place to lift the weight without having to round your upper back and making sure not to fold at the lower back since that doesn't have the muscle power to take all of the weight that you may be lifting and when at the top also not thrusting your hips forward and creating another lower back arch which can also lead to more lower back pain and stress so really just focusing on the booty going backwards and then you'll feel it all in your butt and in your hamstrings compound movement number three is a chest press or really any pressing motion so this can look like your standard barbell chest press, a dumbbell chest press. You can also do it lying down with resistance bands or a cable machine if you wanna do that. You can also do a suspension trainer and just really anything where you're pressing the weight, even if it is your body weight, away from you. So this can also be a push up if you don't have any equipment at all. This targets your chest, but mainly also works your arms, shoulders, a bit of back and your whole core as, as usual, you need to keep it braced in order to do the exercise effectively. You can also play around with this movement and bring your grip closer together to target your triceps a bit more or widen your grip to really get your pecs. You can also do presses at an incline. So when you're flat on a bench, you're really getting pretty much everything in your chest. And when you're at an incline, so the bench is a little bit raised and you're leaning back, you are getting a bit more of your upper pecs and your upper chest area. There are also decline chest press benches where you're basically, you know, at a decline, your head is lower and then you go down and do it. But honestly, especially for the sake of this video, because I don't have any like bodybuilders watching, it's not really shown to have any improvements. People will go to do it to try to get like underneath and like their lower pecs but it's not like a huge benefit and if anything it's like a bit more dangerous since you are at that lower area especially if you are a beginner so unless you are like a bodybuilder which again i doubt you're here on my channel it's just definitely not necessary and maybe even a little bit dangerous to do the decline chest press when there are no benefits that you can't really get from just doing a flat bench press so if you're looking at the decline bench press don't do it just stick with the flat bench. For this move, start with your shoulders tucked in down. That way your traps aren't taking the load and you can do more weight while actually focusing on the muscles you want to target and being sure to feel the squeeze in your chest since it is the main mover and a bigger and stronger muscle than those in your arms. That way you can do more and you can do it more effectively as well, again, having a nice braced core just so you can lift more and just have more stability when pushing the weight off of you and you can do it safely. Maybe try this out grab any little lightweight and do it with a nice braced core and this really goes for any movement and push and be like okay that's easy and then do it when you're just like letting everything hang out but you're still gonna try to do it from your chest and your arms but your tummy you're just like whatever and even with the same weight it's just gonna feel like not as easy to do you're not gonna feel as great your form won't feel as great so just having a nice braced core just really allows you to have that force to push off the load compound movement number four is any overhead press so this is basically any shoulder press that you want to do it can be a military press which includes a barbell you can do dumbbell presses which i enjoy more just because it does challenge your stability a bit you can do my favorite the Arnold press. You can also do overhead pressing movements with resistance bands. The only one that I would say like you don't need to do, especially as a beginner, is behind the neck press. I feel like I see people do it a lot and in that you're just straining your head a lot. If you're trying to target like your rear delts by doing that, like, I don't really know what you're trying to target when you're doing a behind the neck press because it's going to do the same thing as a press in front of your face. 
except you're not straining your neck. So really one thing that exists but you don't need to do behind the neck shoulder press. In order to get the most out of the movement and not use momentum, core stability is super important here. Again, it's really important with all the movements and just all exercising in general, but especially here because if you're pushing something up and you're really just like hoisting it up, it's no longer a shoulder press. Your shoulders are no longer doing the work. It's your whole body. If people that like stand and like push up with their like legs and their whole body, like at that point, you're kind of doing like a calf raise situation since your whole body is lifting the weight up. But by keeping a nice braced core and not using momentum, you really feel it in your shoulders, even if that means having to go down in the weight a little bit. And if standing up and doing a press is too challenging for your core, or you feel like you're arching in your lower back, you can either sit down on a bench that way you don't have to feel like your legs and all that balance is part of it. You can just really focus on your core and again not use momentum or you can even find one of the benches that does have a back and lean up against it. That way you can focus more on your shoulders and you don't feel like your core is struggling to keep you upright. And while you're pressing up, you still wanna keep your shoulders nice and back and down and not have them creep up to your ears when you do it because then it's just gonna cause a lot of tension and tightness in your traps and your traps will also wanna take over more. So while keeping your shoulders back and down and doing the movement and to really feel it in your shoulders, is great to actually work the muscles that you want to work instead of getting traps that want to take everything over because they are in comparison to your three little delts on each side much bigger muscles and your body is like well the bigger muscles can just do the work like that's so much easier for us to do so let's just do that but that's not what you want. So you do have to be mindful of just making sure that your body is in the correct positioning and that the movement is coming from your shoulders and not from your traps or neck, which then it just gets really sore after anyway. And the last compound movement that you must include is any pulling motion. So this can look like a bent barbell row or dumbbell rows or resistance band rows or suspension trainer rows or my favorite, single arm dumbbell rows or even seated rows. Basically all these are rows which are pulling motions because you're pulling the weight closer to you and it targets your back. Per usual having a nice braced core, shoulders back and down, that way when you do the movement you can feel it in your lats and in your rhomboids versus your traps taking over or your lower back taking a lot of the weight. When pulling the weight back towards you, keeping your arms closer to your body and having your elbows go past your torso and feeling the pull and squeeze come from your back and then slowly returning to start for these at the end of the motion when you're all the way expanded, you can have your shoulders come forward a little bit. This will just really allow that muscle to stretch before you pull back and do the full contraction. But just because your shoulder blade is coming forward a little bit doesn't mean it should go up towards your ears because you don't really want that. And doesn't mean you can have a hunched forward posture. Like you don't wanna be hunched forward. Your shoulders can come forward at the end like this. They're still down, they're still tucked, but they're more forward. And then I can pull back. I'm not completely hunching, not what you want. For the bent barbell, and dumbbell rows in particular, you can do a couple different grips. So there's the underhand or supinated grip, which allows your hands to be a bit closer to each other. And you can also pull a bit more weight as your biceps are doing more work than they do in the other way. Or you can do the overhand, which is the pronated grip, which means that your hands might have to be a little bit wider, but it does really target your lats and your rhomboids. And for both the single arm dumbbell row, where you're bent over and rolling, and for the seated cable row, the most common hand position is with your palms facing one another. So when you pull back, whether single or cable, you can really pull your elbows back and keep them close to your torso and really feel your shoulder blades pull together and feel it in your mid back. So for all of these, making sure that you are choosing a weight or a resistance that is challenging, but at the same time can be done with correct form, making sure that your core is braced and you're not using momentum to get the weight up if that is the case, just go down a little bit in the weight or lower your reps. That way you are doing it all correctly and really working the muscles that you want to work. And lastly, making sure to progressively overload either by doing a few more reps or adding a bit more weight in order to continue to challenge your body and build muscle and strength. Well, there you have it. Those are the five compound exercises that you must include in your workout programming. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below what your favorite exercise is and what you wanna see more of on my channel. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe. I'd a new video every Wednesday. So until the next one, thanks for watching.